It is our custom at this time to award honorary degrees to people of great accomplishment in many varied walks of life. We hold them up as deserving of honor and as examples for our graduates this day. Edward B. Berger. So, a comedian walks into a math class. Mm -hmm. At first, the predictable happens. The students laugh. But then, the improbable begins. Students are increasingly stretched. They start to absorb lectures online at night in their rooms and do their homework by day in class. They learn how to fail, learn how to, lear how to learn from failure, and the essential role that failure plays in creativity. They flock not only to his courses, but to those across the department, and eventually major in math at a rate 20 times the national average. Meanwhile, he takes his show on the road. He represents Williams to adoring alumni across the country. He also hits the virtual road, creating thousands of videos that explain math to students from kindergarten to college. NBC gets him to explain comically to the country the math behind the Winter Olympics. He somehow finds time to write books and articles, perhaps during all those times stuck in the lounge at O'Hare. The critics take notice. He's named National Teacher of the Year, first in math and then in all subjects. The Huffington Post includes him in its list of top innovators, mavericks, visionaries, and leaders. He's asked to speak about effective thinking at organizations, including Microsoft and the World Bank. And now, he's been appointed the 15th president of Southwestern University, proving, if it hadn't already been clear, that actually none of this was a joke. I hereby declare you recipient of the honorary degree Doctor of Laws entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. <laughs> Annie Lennox. One of Rolling Stone Magazine's top singers of all time, you have built a daring career that has combined evolving styles of performance with haunting lyrics and a singularly strong voice. No one commands a stage like Annie Lennox. You have sold, both solo and with the Eurythmics, more than 80 million albums, and you have won almost every award in the field, Grammys, a Golden Globe, Brit Awards, Billboard Century Award, an Oscar. Much popular music and fashion in recent decades has followed in your deep wake. At the same time, you have used your iconic status to advance humanitarian causes globally. Your most focused attention has been on issues involving women and girls, including violence, reproductive rights, and AIDS. You are an ambassador for Oxfam, Amnesty International, the British Red Cross, Nelson Mandela's 46664 campaign, and the UN Joint Program on HIV AIDS. You have also founded the campaign called SING to advance awareness of HIV AIDS in Africa and to raise funds to combat it through education and treatment. In doing so, you have given voice to many of the world's most vulnerable and overlooked members, providing them opportunities to someday achieve their own sweet dreams. I hereby declare you recipient of the honorary degree of Doctor of Fine Arts, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto.
Deo gracias, Nizon Kiza. Your life story is so dramatic that it is surprising to find the telling of it in Tracy Kidder's Strength in What Remains in the nonfiction section of the bookstore. While you were a medical student in Burundi, your training hospital became a site of civil war slaughter from which you only narrowly escaped. After a harrowing journey, you arrived in New York a refugee with $200 no English, and no contacts. Sleeping each night, first in an abandoned building, and then in Central Park, you managed to find odd jobs until being befriended, first by a nun, and then by a couple moved by your predicament. With their help, you attended Columbia University, and then the Harvard School of Public Health, and began to work with Paul Farmer's Partners in Health Group. In addition to your uncommon drive and sense of purpose, you somehow inspire heroism in the people around you, from those back home who risked their lives to help save yours, to the many here who sacrificed to advance your dream. That dream has been the opening of Village Health Works, which now operates Burundi's premier health center, along with agricultural development programs, educational services, and income generating projects for women, and which, by serving both Hutus and Tutsis, is poised to advance healing of many kinds. I hereby declare you recipient of the honorary degree Doctor of Laws, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Richard D. Parsons. When the employees are angry, the stockholders hostile, or the regulators salivating, whom do you send? Dick Parsons. With a rare charisma for consensus, you have built an extraordinary career in law, government, and business. Always the diplomat, you have operated on the principle that business, despite its spreadsheets and technology, is, like education, a social activity, and that there is no challenge that cannot be met by getting the right people to listen to each other and find common solutions. Your ability to motivate organizations has led you to such positions as president of the Dime Savings Bank of New York, president of Time Warner, chairman of Citigroup, and now senior advisor at Providence Equity Partners. As a result, you have had a hand in most of the large media transactions of our time. Meanwhile, your ability to see the big picture has led to senior advisor positions with U.S. presidents as varied as Gerald Ford, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama, and in another realm to lead the successful effort to save the Apollo Theater. Some have wondered whether your ability to stay cool grows from your love of jazz, which runs from hosting a weekly radio show to chairing the Jazz Foundation of America. Another reason you have become known with awe as the unmogul mogul. I hereby declare you recipient of the honorary degree Doctor of Laws, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Nancy A. Roseman. Yeah. 
I suppose that deep knowledge of immunology might be at preparation for a college presidency, but let's not go there. <laughs> let's focus instead on your increasingly deft experience as a teacher, scholar, and administrator. You have introduced countless Williams students to the marvels of biology and have published extensively your own scientific work, much of it supported by outside funders, including the National Science Foundation. As its director, you made the Williams Exeter program at Oxford more open to science majors. As assistant to the president for special projects, you led the group that devised the ingenious system that fully and more fairly provides course books to all of our financial aid students. Your years as dean of the college brought improvements to almost every aspect of students' lives, including creation of the Academic Resource Center to provide expanded and more coordinated academic support. Most notably, you led the enormously complex process that imagined, designed, and delivered the first true student center in the college's history. Peresky will serve wonderfully as the college's living room for generations to come. For these reasons and more, you head now to the presidency of Dickinson College with not only our best wishes, but our admiration and deep thanks. I hereby declare you recipient of the honorary degree Doctor of Laws entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Stacy M. Schiff. Right. What might a biographer someday write about you? Well, let's examine the evidence. Inveterate resident of New York City, possibly an overreaction to growing up in small town western Massachusetts. Deep-seated geekiness. Probably all those childhood hours hold up in the Adams Free Library. A prying interest in other people's lives. The many hours spent gossiping in the common room of Willie F. A commitment to scrupulous research. The lingering influence, no doubt, of your college professors. The obsession with Antoine de Saint-Exupéry the painful loss of that balsa wood glider brand named Rosebud. <laughs> a fixation on the aging Benjamin Franklin. Mm, reread Freud. <laughs> the depiction of Cleopatra as a woman of uncommon ability, discipline, and confidence. Pure projection. Being translated into 36 languages, had a hard time settling down. The amassing of wide critical acclaim and honors, such as the George Washington Book Prize, the Ambassador Award in American Studies, the Institut Francais Gilbert Chenal Prize, and even a Pulitzer, chronic overachievement. <laughs> I'm sorry if this cuts too close to the bone. We are merely following your own observation that reality does not easily give up meaning. It's the biographer's job to clobber it into submission <laughs> and are just trying to follow your own example since, as one reviewer has observed, even if forced to at gunpoint, Stacy Schiff would be incapable of writing a dull page or a lame sentence. I hereby declare you recipient of the honorary degree Doctor of Letters entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. Billie Jean King. One day, at the age of 11, you turned to your mother and, with racket in hand, said, 
I'm going to be number one in the world. You had no way of knowing at that innocent age what it says. <laughs> you said it once. <laughs> You had no way of knowing at that innocent age in how many ways that would become true. You were indeed ranked the world's number one women's tennis player five times based on 39 Grand Slam titles in singles and doubles. <laughs> including a record 20 of them at Wimbledon. But that turned out to be just the start. You practically invented women's professional sports. <laughs> you were the first player to lobby for and obtain equal prize money for women. You were the force behind the launch of the Women's Tennis Association the first female sports commissioner in history, and the first woman to have major sports venue named after her. In 1973, in the Houston Astrodome, you competed in and won one of the most watched sporting events in world history, the legendary Battle of the Sexes. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't know. None of you people in black gowns know, but everybody else knows. <laughs> Battling turns out to be what you do best, especially for the expansion of opportunities for women and the protection of gay and lesbian rights. No future history of the advancement of these issues in our time can be written without appreciating the contributions of the icon who went on from the age of 11 to not only be the best, but do the best. I hereby declare you recipient of the honorary degree, Doctor of Laws, entitled to all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto.